Our next speaker is a hobbyist, maker, and cosplayer based right here in Los Angeles. In her talk, she explains how she designed and fabricated some beautiful electronically articulated wings for her award-winning Golden Eagle Wonder Woman cosplay. Please uh, join me in welcoming to the Hackaday Supercon stage, Liz McFarland. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is my first time at Supercon, and I've been having so much fun. This conference is amazing. Um, but yeah, I'm here to talk about how I built my electronically actuated cosplay wings. And I wanted to give this talk because I had never built electronically actuated cosplay wings before. And you know, I don't have a lot of experience with electronics. It's something that I'm learning. And I learned so much throughout the process of building this cosplay. And I thought it would be cool to talk about how you know, I went about designing these wings, uh, some of the restraints that I faced, like size and weight and cost, and talk about the things that I'm really happy with about this cosplay and things that I might do a little differently if I were to remake these wings. Um, but first, a little context. Uh, if you're not familiar, cosplay is this really fun hobby where you dress up as characters and go to public events, usually like conventions. Um, and I like to dress up as like uh, comic characters, uh, characters from video games. Um, those are generally my speed. Um, and I really like to make my own costumes. So earlier this year, I made another Wonder Woman cosplay um, fabricated almost entirely out of EVA foam, also known as craft foam. Uh, and I actually designed the tiara and the armlet in uh, CAD with Onshape um, and printed it using my 3D printer, painted everything with my airbrush. And the, you know, the Scarlet Witch I also made um, by hand. I uh, designed and sewed the leotard and I also made the tiara out of foam as well. I got into cosplay back in 2015. Um, I had just moved to LA and I love going to local conventions and I love any excuse to dress up and I've been making my own Halloween costumes since I was a kid. Uh, so cosplay to me just kind of came naturally. Um, I love how creative it can be and I love seeing how different people interpret the same character, the same costume, or put their own spin on a costume. Um, I also love that all the different materials and techniques and skills that can can go into building a cosplay. Um, so like I said, I grew up making my own Halloween costumes. I'm very familiar using a sewing machine, but in the past couple of years, I've gotten into 3D printing, using laser cutters, incorporating LEDs, learning electronics. Um, so like my Jaina cosplay, you know, I designed and sewed all the fabric elements. I 3D printed uh, the ornamentation on the staff uh, with SDLs that I bought online, um, and I you know, designed and built the armor out of foam. Uh, I put LEDs in the staff too. So there's just so much that can go into building a costume. And I love when a costume or cosplay gives me an excuse to learn a new skill. And that would certainly be the case with this costume. Uh, so this is Wonder Woman's Golden Eagle armor from Wonder Woman 1984. Um, and I love this costume. When I saw it, the thing in my cosplayer brain went off that said, I need to make this costume. Um, I also love cosplay wings. I'd seen other cosplayers make them before, and I thought this would be a really good opportunity uh, to learn how to make them. Uh, so with the project in mind, I knew I wanted to make articulated wings. Um, I had some other goals in mind as well. Uh, firstly, uh, as with most, most of my projects, um, I try to do things relatively inexpensively. Like this is just a hobby for me. Uh, and this would involve a lot of uh, learning and uh, trying out new things. And so I try to gravitate towards like relatively inexpensive materials. I think all told, I spent maybe like a couple hundred dollars on this costume over the course of several months, um, which isn't too bad considering how costly some cosplays can be. Um, I also needed it to be lightweight and portable because the idea was to wear this to a convention. Uh, so I needed to be able to fit the wings in my car and transport it pretty easily to the convention and then be able to wear the wings for several hours. Um, I also really wanted to achieve that shiny gold texture that you see in her costume, um, but I didn't really want to use metal because, again, it's kind of expensive and I thought it would be uncomfortable to wear. I thought it might be heavy. Um, also, something to keep in mind when you go to conventions and wear costumes is that uh, some conventions have pretty strict rules on what kind of materials you can build your cosplays out of. Um, obviously, they don't want anything that can be dangerous or hazardous to other people. Um, I almost 
didn't get into this convention with this costume because the staff was too pointy. Um, so that's something that I'm definitely conscious of when I am making cosplays now is, uh, you know, is it going to abide by the rules? Can I get into the convention? No problem. Um, so that was something that I had in mind as well. Um, I also wanted it to look good on stage because about halfway through building this uh, cosplay, I decided to compete in the uh, San Diego Comic-Con Special Edition Cosplay Masquerade, which is like their cosplay contest. Um, and so I wanted it to look on stage and that would influence some of my decision making later on. So planning out the cosplay, um, one of the first things I do with most of my cosplays is try to break down a costume into its individual components. Obviously there's a lot going on with this costume. Um, in addition to the wings, I wanted to make everything else too. Uh, so breaking it down into its individual parts, planning out a to-do list, um, figuring out what materials I would need, uh, this, doing this helps a lot. And I, I took all these notes in Notion, which is a really great uh, note-taking tool. Um, and yeah, this is where I kept all of my reference photos, made my ch checklist, to-do list, um, all of my internet research. Speaking of, um, two great tutorials that helped me in building this uh, project. Uh, Acceleration Designs has a really great tutorial on how she built her electronically actuated cosplay wings, and I took a lot of inspiration from her build into my build as well. For example, uh, she uses linear actuators, so I ended up using linear actuators. Um, and then also, Sela Sarah has a really great tutorial on how she built her cosplay wings, which don't um, actuate, but I really like the design of her back plates um, and her harness system, so I took inspiration from that as well. So with a general idea of how I wanted to build these wings, next step was figuring out how I was gonna construct them. So my friend Sam was kind enough to help me CAD this out in on shape, and this was really great for figuring out like size and scale of everything. Um, I knew I wanted about a 10 foot wingspan, which is about like three meters wide. And so working from that backwards, I was able to figure out, well, how big did the frame need to be? How big did the feathers need to be? How many could I fit on the frame? And still, uh, yeah, taking into consideration like si size and weight as well. Um, so catting this out helped a ton. Um, also, I was using two four inch linear actuators because as I would learn throughout the uh, build of this process, uh, linear actuators can get really expensive. And so I wanted to, uh, yeah, balance out cost as well as like I wanted the wings to lift up. Um, so four inches worked for pretty well, um, but catting this up helped me figure out where to place them to get like the maximum amount of lift um, and angling the pipe as well uh, to figure out just the overall shape and size and uh, wingspan. Next came assembling the wings. So with a plan in mind, I was able to assemble the wings. Um, and so I made the frame out of PVC pipe, which is a great material for building wings because it's lightweight, it's cheap, you can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's or anything like that. Um, and you can curve it pretty easily. So um, you can heat form PVC. Um, what I did was I taped off one end of the pipe, filled it with sand, and then taped off the other end. And then I was able to uh, carefully heat it uh, with a heat gun uh, evenly and then press it against the, this jig that I made um, at Crash Space. Uh, I made it with some heavy duty cabling that we had lying around. Um, but this was really great um, for getting the shape that I wanted. And the, the sand helps the pipe uh, retain its tubular shape so it doesn't like crumple in on itself, which it tends to want to do. For the back plate, I used a quarter inch acrylic that I laser cut, and you can see I had slots for straps that I would use to attach it to me, kind of like a backpack. Um, I heat formed this as well in my oven, and then carefully laid it on the back of my sewing mannequin, uh, wrapped in towels and aluminum foil to prevent any meltage. Um, but this helped the back plate to fit up against my back a little bit better. Uh, so this is what the structure of the wings look like. So to attach the frame of the wings, um, I epoxied some slightly larger PVC tubing uh, to the back of the back plates, um, used some 3D printed fittings to keep everything in place so that way the, uh, the frame of the wings could just slide into the back and then lock in place with screws and bolts. Uh, like I said, I used two four inch linear actuators and so those are attached to the frame uh, using uh, brackets. Um, and then the uh, frame of the wing uh, has a hinge so that when the linear actuator pushes out, uh, the frame of the wings moves up. Um, and so the, all of those are wired to a double pull, double throw switch because I wanted the wings to have three modes, up, down, and off. 
And at the time of this build, uh, I was using a USB like phone battery charger, which is really great for cosplay because you can just swap it out throughout the day um, and you can recharge it pretty easily. Uh, but to use that, I needed to use a USB step up to 12 volt converter because the linear actuators take 12 volts and the USB outputs five. When it came to decorating the wings, figuring out how to make the, the feathers, as I called them, um, I debated on a lot of different materials. Um, acrylic is great because you can laser cut it, but I was afraid that it would be too fragile for as long as, and as thin as I wanted it to be. Um, cardboard, also a great material, uh, but wasn't quite the texture that I wanted. I ended up using task board, which is like this really great wood-based material. It's very thin and you can get it at um, art supply stores. Um, and so I took that, I laser cut it, and then I covered it in gold wrapping paper that I attached with a uh, spray adhesive. And then I also made like a little laser cut uh, template that I could use to kind of like engrave the design on top of the feathers. And then I assembled all my feathers, glued them together, and then attached them to the frame. So you can see um, I have the feathers attached to the frame with screws and bolts at the top. And then the outermost feathers I have attached along the length of the PVC um, with a clear thread running along the back. So when the outer feathers move with the movement of the uh, frame, they pull the rest of the feathers up with it. Um, and at that point, I was almost done. Um, I was pretty happy with how I was making progress on these wings, but at the point in this build, I knew I was going to compete uh, in the cosplay masquerade. And uh, when you compete in a cosplay masquerade, you typically only have like a minute on stage. And at this point, my wings took about 20 seconds for a full movement, but my linear actuators were rated for 10 seconds for a full movement. Um, and that was because I was using the USB to 12 volt converter. I just didn't have enough current to get the full draw of the linear actuators. So I swapped the USB phone chargers out with batteries. Um, I wired two sets of three 18650 batteries, wired those two in, uh, so wired those in series and then wired those two sets in parallel. Um, and this just meant I had more current so the linear actuators could get the full uh, effect. And that actually cut down the movement almost in half. Okay, so that's what this looks like. Um, and at this point I was almost done with the wings, um, almost done with the cosplay. Um, I know 12 seconds versus 20 seconds doesn't seem like a big deal, but when you only have a minute on stage, like every second counts. As for everything else, um, everything else came together relatively easily. Uh, I made the foam armor. I made the armor out of foam. Um, I used a lot of gold spray paint. Everything was attached with hot glue and contact cement and zippers. Um, yeah. As for the underlayer suits, um, I made those out of dance tights. And so for the arms, I used laser cut EVA foam that I painted gold and just attached that with hot glue. Uh, but for the legs, I wanted to use uh, 3D printed elements. So I did like a layer of dance tights and then I did a layer of tool that I had 3D printed on. Um, and if you've never printed on fabric before, it's a really fun technique where you just print a couple of layers of your print, pause the print, insert your fabric. In this case, I was using like a lightweight tool, um, and then finish the prints, and then it kind of sandwiches the fabric. Um, and so I got this really cool shiny gold effect. And I thought it was really cool too that the costume designer mentioned that they also use 3D printed elements in their costume. Um, and then for the lasso, I followed this really great tutorial. It's a really fun, quick project where you take EL wire and then wrap it in this like gold tubing that you can get on like Amazon. Um, I think it's used in like gift wrapping and packaging, but you end up with this really cool glowing gold rope effect. So this was the final result. Um, like I said, I, completed in the, I competed in the Cosplay Masquerade at San Diego Comic-Con Special Edition last year, and I won three prizes, which is really cool. Um, thanks. Yeah, so I won um, an honorable mention overall. I won best comic character, and then I also won the Artist Guild's award for graphic design, uh, which they give out based on uh, best use of materials or techniques in making a costume. Okay, so this is a video of what they look like in action. This was like right outside the convention where like press and media took video of all the contestants. Um, and I'm really happy with how these wings turned out. I think they look really effective, especially on stage. They just look so shiny and gold. Um, 
yeah, I'm really proud of how they turned out. However, because I was focused on making the front look good, the back was a little bit of a different story. Um, but at least this way you can see how everything wired together. I have my linear actuators, and those are wired down to uh, the battery pack. And then I also have the switch mounted on the back of the frame. Um, and yeah, this worked pretty well. Um, so my takeaways from this project are wings are really fun, but very challenging. Um, you're trying to figure out how to make a costume wearable and comfortable while also trying to be like screen accurate. Um, and in this case, like they used four different versions of the wings in the film, like some for close-ups, some for wide shots, obviously a lot of CGI. Um, so I was never gonna get like a fully screen accurate costume, but I think I got the overall spirit of it. Um, and then despite my best efforts, the wings did feel a little bit heavy. Um, because I competed in the cosplay contest, um, we were required to be fully dressed backstage before and after the contest. Um, so I was wearing these wings for a couple of hours, and at some point I just needed to like sit down or take the wings off and get a little bit of break because they just felt a little heavy. Um, and then yeah, somebody asked me if I were to remake this costume, what would I do differently? And I think I would definitely try to improve how the back looks, maybe like run the wires through the pipe so they're a little less visible, maybe try painting the linear actuators, but that made me a little nervous, so I don't know. Um, and then, yeah, maybe move the placement of the switch, as you can see in this video. I kind of have to like reach behind me um, to turn the wings up or down, and I think moving the switch somewhere a little bit less conspicuous would be a good option. But yeah, that's how I built those wings. Thank you so much for listening to my talk. Um, I posted all of my talk notes on GitHub, and I posted all the list of materials that I used in my cosplay wings, um, so feel free to check that out. Um, you can find me on Instagram, that's where I post most of my pictures of my cosplays, I'm also on Twitter, and then you can find me in person at Crashbase. Uh, I run a monthly wearables Wednesday, which is a really cool, chill hangout where we just work on cosplay projects or LED wearables. Um, it's a very, like, cool hangout, and you're all welcome, and it's also hybrid, so if you're not local, you can also join the Google Meet, too. Um, but thank you so much. Yeah.